So, Mr. Seatail, what adjectives do your friends use to describe you? Hmm, friendly yet unpleasant. That's what my sophomore year English teacher wrote on my report card anyway. Well, one of those I like, but one of those I hate. Hmm. Oh well, welcome aboard, Seatail. Yay! Now get to work! Now I need to figure out how to make him less friendly. Ugh. Who the heck are you? The name's Seatail. I was just hired here as the assistant manager. That is, until my marching band career takes off. I guess he's the manager of the torture department. Mr. Seatail, could, could you stop? All this noise is making me nauseous. Hmm, nausea, huh? In that case, go home and get some rest. Gee, thanks. Well, that was surprising. Mr. Seatail! For that, his salary is being deducted from your paycheck, idiot! But, uh, Mr. Boss, isn't that- Alright. That's the unpaid intern. I'll get you next time. Stupid Seatail. First off, this SO lang is called fish, but it isn't spelled like that. The true name of the language is this ASCII rendition of a fish. But since that would suck as a YouTube video title and as a wiki page article, it's just spelled like this in the video title. And also on the wiki page. Fish is an esoteric programming language that was created in 2009 by a user of the Esselang wiki known as Harpion. It's two-dimensional, meaning that the code is run using a command pointer on a grid, rather than line by line like a traditional programming language. These four commands here, for example, resemble arrows, and they are used to specify the direction the command pointer will move in. If you have an aversion to arrows for whatever reason, though, there's an alternative to the arrows. Slashes can be used as mirrors, which reflect the command pointer in the way that makes sense logically based on how it looks. So, what's the actual point of the mirrors other than making the code look slightly prettier at times? There is none! Except for making the code look slightly prettier at times. Fish stores data in a structure called the stack. When the command pointer encounters a hexadecimal digit, it will push the corresponding value onto the stack. So in this example, the number 15 is pushed onto the stack. Now we have data stored in memory, but that isn't very useful unless we want to output it. Luckily, Fish has two ways to output things. The letter N removes the top value on the stack and outputs it as a number, while O removes the top value on the stack and outputs it as the corresponding ASCII character. So this program will print the number 15. Huh, what the heck? This program's printing 15 over and over and over again! How do I make it stop? Oh yeah, I forgot to add the stop command, which is a semicolon. Without the semicolon, the command pointer will wrap around the source code indefinitely. But with the semicolon, the program ends as soon as the command pointer hits it. Anyway, new guy, quiz time! What does this program print? Well, I see 1, 2, 3, 4 there, so I'm a guess. 1, 2, 3, 4! Seatail, that's... COMPLETELY WRONG! Well, how could you? You see, when something is removed from the stack, it removes the last thing placed in. So this program will actually print 4321. But what if I want the program to actually print 1234? I mean, 1234 is a nice sequence. And because 1234 is a nice sequence, I don't want to change it in the code. Well, you could reverse the stack using the R command. Now, it does print 1, 2, 3, 4, since the stack is in the reverse order. Anyway, now let's change from printing numbers to printing text. Putting words between quotes will push the string onto the stack as a sequence of ASCII characters. Now, we can simply reverse them and print the letters out using the O command. Pretty cool, huh? Well, is there a way to generalize this? I mean, it looks kind of annoying to have to rate the exact number of O's that correspond to the length of the string. Of course there is. We can use a loop. Before reversing, we can put a zero on top of the stack. After reversing, this zero is on the bottom of the stack. Now the program enters a loop, which is literally represented by a loop of arrows. After printing the letter, it duplicates the top value on the stack and reaches the question mark operator. This operator starts by popping the top value off of the stack. If that value is a zero, it will jump over the next instruction, which is moving down, and head into the colon. Otherwise, it will run the next instruction, which continues the loop. Once it reaches the end of the string, it hits the zero we put in earlier, so the program terminates. Not having this zero here will cause an error once it hits the question mark, since it will try to read a value that's not there. Something smells fishy. Now let's write a program dealing with input, the truth machine. 
The truth machine takes an input as a binary digit. If it's a zero, we output a single zero, and if it's a one, we output ones indefinitely. First, we take input from the user using the i command. Next, the number 48, the ASCII code for the zero symbol, is placed onto the stack. It is generated by pushing a six, pushing an eight, and then multiplying them. Next, we subtract this 48 from our input using the subtract command. If the user typed a zero, the result of this subtraction will be a zero, so the pointer jumps over this arrow, prints a zero, and the program terminates. If the user didn't type a zero, the program moves down, where it gets caught in this loop of printing ones. There will be no escape. You turtle loser! Your days of being the number one SOLANG channel on YouTube are numbered! I just finished my first SOLANG video, and it's about the very same SOLANG you're talking about here. Dead fish! <laughs> Dead fish? Do you mean... fish? No, of course not! Wait, do you mean fish? Yes. Oh, well, that's embarrassing. Hey, this gives me an idea. I'm gonna play your dead fish video here if that's alright. Uh, sure. <laughs> if you want to give free publicity to your number one enemy. <laughs> okay then, roll the clip! Greetings, tiny insignificant wakelings! My name is Obfuscate, and welcome to my new YouTube channel! You see, this puny mortal known as Truddle One makes SOLANG videos, so I'm gonna make SOLANG videos and get more subscribers than him! <laughs> you see, he's doing a video on dead fish, so I'm gonna do a video on dead fish and release it first! Welcome to Obfuscate's SOLANG Adventures! So, Deadfish was made by this puny mortal named Jonathan Todd Skinner. It has four commands that each modify a register. I will increment the register by one, D will decrement the register by one, S will square it, and O will output it as a number. Of course, there's one more feature of Deadfish. The idiotic, worthless insect that wrote the original interpreter wanted to make sure the register was between 0 and 256. But they failed at writing code! It only sets the register to 0 if the value is negative 1 or 256. <laughs> For a Deadfish interpreter to work, it must follow these test cases. This should output a zero since it gets to 256. This should print 288, and this should print zero! So now, Trottle's dead fish video will be forced to follow my dead fish video! So subscribe to my channel, so we can overtake Trottle One subscribers! Join me in defeating that puny turtle loser! <laughs> I'm obfuscating, I approve this message. So, here's a dead fish interpreter written in fish. Thanks for your help, obfuscate. What? So, first things first, the dead fish interpreter takes in all of the user's input using a loop. Eventually, there will be nothing left in the input, in which case, fish will just assume that the input is a negative one. Once that is reached, the loop is exited, and the inputted code is reversed, so it's on the stack in the same order the user wrote it. And so, the interpretation of the code begins. Fish contains a register that can hold values. If the register is empty and the command pointer hits an ampersand, the top value on the stack is moved into the register. If the register already has a value, when the command pointer hits an ampersand, it will instead push that value back onto the stack. So this example program puts an 11 into the register, takes it out of the register, and outputs it. Moving back to the deadfish interpreter, the deadfish commands are detected using a similar method to checking if the user typed a zero in the truth machine. If they type an i, the value on the register is placed onto the stack, that value is incremented by one, and then it is returned to the register. D subtracts one from the register using a very similar method. S takes the register, duplicates its value, multiplies the duplicates together, squaring them, and returns the value back to the register. Finally, O takes the register, creates a duplicate, outputs one copy as a number, and puts the other copy back into the register. 
So now, this deadfish interpreter is able to execute all of the commands. After parsing each command, the interpreter makes sure that the register isn't negative 1 or 256. If the register is either one of those values, the register is set back to zero. Also, in this program I use this tilde operator that I don't think I've explained in any of the previous examples. What it does is it just takes the top value on the stack and discards it. It's pretty simple, really. So, does this interpreter satisfy the test cases? Well, let's find out! Cool! Also, I think this is the first time you used an SLang in one of your videos to create an interpreter for another SLang. So that's neat! Now you may be saying, Hey, fish seems to be almost exactly like Befunge! And you're right, that's because fish was based off of Befunge. And that's also kinda why I put it off for so long. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time! And for all you returning viewers to my channel, you know what's coming next.